Now, let's try to understand uh, generalized linear models which are treated as the general extension to the linear regression based models. Right? And uh, or the other way of uh, simply putting out is whatever the linear regression which we know is a simple form of the generalized linear model. And many of the ideas, concepts from regression, we will try to bring in when we start looking at uh, creating a generalized linear model out of the data. The prime difference between this generalized linear models and the regular regression that we have looked at is, in the regression, majority of the dependent as well as the independent variables which we have considered, we have looked at that most of them should be normal in nature. But if they are becoming more and more non-normal, in reality there could be wide varieties of data sets which may not have the normality built into them. They may not have a normal distribution packaged with them. Probably if I am looking at the typical insurance world, for modeling the force of mortality in the life insurance space, for modeling the force of mortality, generally the Poisson distribution is being used. Or in a general insurance space, for modeling the claim frequency, again a Poisson distribution could be used. But for modeling claim severity, some kind of uh, extreme value kind of or positively skewed kind of models like uh, a gamma model, a gamma distributed model or a log normal kind of a distribution is very much assumed of the data. Which means there are so many practical application which really do not uh, go with assuming that the data is normal means for those kind of data, if I have to do a prediction, the regular normal, uh, normal distribution based linear regression model may not be of much of an advantage. Now this is where any data analysis that we are uh, coming out, any data analysis exercise that we are trying to do, our intention should be to decide what are the key factors or what are the key variables which can predict the outcome which we are looking at which we are which we are, let's say if i am predicting some form of a risk what are the factors or the variables that play a very important role in the prediction now once i have identified these factors my task is to come out with a very good relationship model, right? That is what a regression does. That is what a GLM also will do. It comes out with a proper relationship model between all these predictor variables and the outcome which I want to predict. So the, in the insurance world, once I am able to do this properly, a proper premium pricing, product pricing can quite comfortably be done. So this variable which I am predicting is actually called as my response variable, right? And uh, all these uh, various factors and variables which are used for the purpose of predicting the response variable, they are either called as my predictors, in some contexts I call them as my covariates or a very common word for them being the independent variables. We generally have the information about all these variables. We have the data about all these variables. And this is a variable for which we can't directly observe the data. So we have to predict it based on the relationship with these kind of variables. Now, as a first step in this entire process, I really want to understand what is the distribution of this response variable. Right? 
After that, I can try linking all these covariates with this kind of a data. So, find out the distribution of the response variable. So, to start with, we will see the general form of the distribution which are known as the exponential family of distributions. So, we will try to use the exponential family of distributions which all distributions come under this family and how can I really use all these exponential family distribution as a part of my general linear model. It is a very interesting uh, piece. Whenever we are talking about an exponential family, it is a straightforward stuff. Every distribution, right, uh, a, which is having a density function, let us say I am talking about uh, two parameters, theta and phi. Any distribution which is involving two parameters, uh, two or less, wherein I can establish the density function in this form, right, wherein I can establish the density function in this exponential form e to the power of y theta minus b of theta divided by a of phi plus c of y comma phi. Now we understand, we have to understand, okay, something has to be in an exponential form. Now this is y multiplied by theta, whereas this is b of theta, this is a function of theta, this is a function of, uh, this is a of phi, this is a function of phi and this is a function of both y and theta. So this, any distribution that can be expressed in this form, we call this as an exponential family. Now here, in this data, we are having two parameters as I have said. The theta is actually called as the natural parameter. So here, this is the one which is more and more relevant to the model. And it is relating the response to the covariates. You see, there is an aspect of y theta. So it is re relating the response variable to the covariates. That is the reason we call it as a natural parameter and it is more and more relevant to the model. Whereas, when I look at phi, it is known as the scale parameter, typically a measure of dispersion. Right? So, every data, every, uh, every distribution that can be expressed in this form we can very well call it as an exponential family of distribution. So, there will be a, a natural parameter as well as a scale parameter. Now, what we generally see is distributions like normal distribution, right, binomial, Poisson, gamma, and even log normal all of them, they fall under the category of exponential distribution. We can try seeing in each of these cases, how we go ahead, uh, uh, how can I say that these are all belonging to an exponential family of distribution. Now, beyond that, right, if I am going ahead with a simple understanding, okay, if I say the likelihood function for this, is nothing but L of y theta comma phi. The log likelihood function will come out as log of whatever the function is f of y theta and phi. Now, we know that two major results here, the expected value of dou L by dou theta, this will be equal to 0. And expected value of dou squared L by dou theta squared, whatever uh, is the log likelihood, the dou squared L by dou theta squared plus expected value of dou L by dou theta whole squared, this should be equal to 0. 
So these two relations we will use to finally uh, arrive at what are the expected values of uh, uh, expected values of uh, y and uh, the variance of y to derive those kind of stuff uh, from this uh, exponential kind of uh, family distributions itself. So let's start one by one. Let's get started with uh, a normal distribution. First of all, I need to know how I can establish in the form of an exponential family. We know that the density function for a normal distribution is 1 by root 2 pi sigma squared e to the power of minus half y minus mu by sigma whole squared. So this is what is the typical expression, right? Now I have to write it in this form, right? I have to see if it has to belong to an exponential family, it has to come out as y theta minus b of theta divided by a of phi plus c of y comma phi. Now this is where I'll try to look at. I'll write it as, okay, first of all, let me expand it e power minus y squared by 2 sigma squared. Let me write everything in the form of e to the power. e to the power of minus y squared by 2 sigma squared. Right? Minus mu squared by 2 sigma squared. plus y mu y mu by sigma squared and this also what I can very well write is e to the power of log square root of 2 pi sigma squared right So this entire thing now I can uh, simplify it in this particular manner e to the power of now I'll take the y term probably something like this y mu minus half mu square this entire thing let's say I'm doing it uh, divided by sigma squared and on the other side I'm capturing both uh, minus y, uh, minus half times right I am taking it as minus half times y squared by sigma squared plus this also becomes half so that's the reason I can uh, minus so this becomes a uh, to the power half so this comes uh, to the forefront so overall, uh, this is uh, going to become for me, once I have taken it out, this is becoming log 2 pi sigma squared. Right, this is actually log minus, so it will come out, so this I can make it log 2 pi sigma squared. Now if I see, there is a lot of relation, okay, y theta, y mu. So here my theta is going to be mu. Then b of theta is nothing but half mu squared. So basically I will write b of theta is half mu squared here. Okay. Then a of phi. a of phi is same as sigma squared for me. Alright. Then what else? Uh, C of y comma theta a of phi is that so now a of phi is sigma squared so this is where uh, probably if I am uh, looking at it this is nothing but minus half times okay now y squared by sigma squared is phi plus log 2 phi 2 pi phi this is what is c of y comma phi right probably i can say theta is mu 
then phi is if I am assuming that phi is sigma squared then uh, b of theta is nothing but theta squared by 2 a of phi now is becoming phi now on the top of it I want to find out right I have taken let's say uh, theta is mu and beta uh, I mean a of uh, phi is uh, mu squared so based on that I am writing everything in the form of thetas and phi's only now what we are simply saying is as we have initially uh, discussed that uh, expected value in this case expected value of dou i by dou theta should be equal to zero so first of all the uh, log likelihood for this this is the likelihood so the log likelihood will not have uh, the e exponent in it so this becomes y theta minus b of theta divided by a of phi plus c of y comma phi now if i take a derivative of this with respect to theta this is becoming y minus b dash theta equal to zero so basically we are getting the expected value of y is coming out as b dash theta and the same exercise will give me variance of y as a of phi times b double dash of theta now the same logic here if i put expected value of y comes to b dash theta which is nothing but now b of theta is theta squared by 2 so i'll get it as this which is theta theta is same as that of the mu so this is my expected value of y then variance of y will come out as a of phi which is phi times b double dash of theta b dash of theta is theta b double dash of theta is 1 so variance of y will come out to phi and we know phi is sigma squared so we are able to arrive at uh, finding out the mean as well as the variance of the normal distribution even using this kind of a method so the normal distribution is quite comfortably fitting into the family of exponential distribution here the mean whatever we have got it does not depend on phi so when predicting y expected value of y only theta is an important variable and not the phi and if I look at the variance part, there is some part in the variance that is involving the scale parameter, which is the phi. And the other part which determines the way the variance is depending on the mean. You could see there is the second part a of phi, which is uh, the scale parameter and b double dash of theta, which is clearly saying the variance is depending on the mean in general but here it very well came out that the b double dash of theta is 1 so the variance is nowhere depending on the mean because the b double dash of theta is coming out to 1 but for some other distribution that may not be the case at all right so this is where i really have to look at uh, uh, different kinds of distributions Probably when we uh, move further, let's say uh, now I want to look at a Poisson distribution and establish a similar kind of a relationship there. Okay, f of y is, I can, uh, I, I generally uh, what we write with the Poisson distribution, uh, lambda per x e per minus lambda by x factorial. Now, what I simply suggest is write everything first in the form of e. e to the power of log lambda per x. e to the power of minus lambda. Right? And uh, e to the power of minus log x factorial. Now, because of this, I can very well say e to the power of x log lambda minus lambda minus log x factorial right so these are the ones that are coming up 
So this is what is my exponent. Now I really want it in the form of e to the power of y theta minus b of theta divided by a of phi plus c of y comma c of y comma phi. Now if I am looking at it from this way, I can very well see that probably in place of x let me put y for simplification part. Okay, y log lambda. So here I am taking theta is log lambda. And uh, uh, probably I am taking phi is 1. So if I am taking phi is 1, a of phi also is directly becoming 1, which is nothing but a of phi I am taking it as 1. So here I am simply uh, looking at now, when I'm saying b of theta, right, if I, because I have taken theta as log lambda, so the here the b of theta is lambda, which means I can write it as e power theta. So, b of theta will become e power theta here. And uh, for me, I have got c of y comma phi, we have got it as minus log y factorial. And of course, there is no phi here because phi is 1. I have got c of y comma phi as this much itself. Now, from here, I can find out the mean. Expected value of y, we have already got it as b dash of theta. We know that b of theta is e power theta. So, b dash of theta is again becoming e power theta. e power theta is nothing but e power log lambda, which is giving me lambda. Lambda is becoming the mean of this distribution. The variance of y, we have already said it is a of phi times b double dash of theta. a of phi, we have taken it as 1. b double dash of theta again is e power theta, which is again lambda itself. So the variance and the mean are same. Variance and mean are proportional. But at same time, because a of phi is equal to 1, I can say variance is equal to mean. That is what we got. That is what we know about the normal Poisson distribution again. The variance is same as that of the mean in case of a Poisson distribution. Now, we can look at a similar kind of uh, understanding uh, with respect to binomial distribution also. Here it's not that straightforward. We may have to make uh, some kind of uh, modification here. But yes, before I do it, let's uh, let's try to uh, look at uh, what is that we are doing. Let's say I'm talking about uh, a binomial distribution. I mean, Z is a data set that is uh, following a binomial distribution with uh, n and mu as the parameters. Right, n, n is the number of observations and mu is the probability of success. Now, this is where we are introducing another parameter called y or another data set called y where we do it as z divided by n so that the z actually becomes ny. Now, this is where we look at uh, the distribution of z. Uh, we know that the distribution of z is nothing but ncz times mu power z into 1 minus mu to the power n minus z. Now the same thing instead of z I will take it as ny. This change is very much necessary. In case of z I will take it as ny. So I will write it as f of y comes out as nc ny mu to the power of ny, 1 minus mu to the power of n minus ny. Now, this is uh, very much required for us to really understand. Now, write everything in the form of e to the power. e to the power of log nc ny plus ny log mu plus n minus ny 
log 1 minus mu right so now i can uh, very well uh, do the necessary uh, adjustment i can very well write it as e to the power of if i am uh, looking at uh, if i am looking at this part i can take out n out if i am taking n out right i can very well write n and okay let me uh, expand it e to the power of log n c n y plus n y log mu plus n log 1 minus mu minus n y log 1 minus mu now this is where all i can combine is this plus this right i'll first do the combination of e to the power of n times when i'm taking y out right it's coming n y log mu by 1 minus mu that i'll take it right i'll take it as n y log mu by 1 minus mu then i'll take n log 1 minus mu and then I'll take log n c n y. Now this is where I'll try to uh, compare it with our regular form e to the power of y theta minus b of theta divided by a of pi plus c of y comma phi. How can I look at it? Now look at y theta. So y and this is theta. So this is actually uh, becoming y is, I mean, uh, theta is actually becoming log mu by 1 minus, sorry, theta is becoming log mu by 1 minus mu. And uh, we know that b of theta, b of theta is log 1 minus mu. So, which can very well become, see if I am th if I am taking e power theta, okay, if theta is log mu by 1 minus mu, e power theta will become what? Mu divided by 1 minus mu, right? This is becoming e power theta. Now, when I do 1 plus e power theta, 1 plus mu by 1 minus mu which is becoming 1 by 1 minus mu. So I can take uh, 1 by 1 plus e power theta or probably when I am saying log e power theta 1 plus e power theta this is simply 1 by 1 minus mu. So, if I say log 1 plus e power theta, this is becoming minus log 1 minus mu, right? So, this is coming out here. So, I can very well assume that b of theta is nothing but log 1 plus e of theta here. Okay, now what about this? C, uh, now a of phi, a of phi, so here phi I will take it as n. Right, if I am taking phi as n, a of phi will become 1 by n. Right, so I will write it as in the form of 1 by phi. So, which means uh, here I can very well write n c n y, c of y comma phi, I will write it as log n c n y. I will write it as log n c n y. Now, based on this, I can very well uh, find out what is the expected value of y which comes out as b dash of theta. Now b of theta is I know that uh, log 1 plus e power theta. So b dash of theta is 1 by 1 plus e power theta into e power theta. Now I know what is uh, e power theta mu by 1 minus mu. So, this becomes mu by 1 minus mu by 1 plus 
mu by 1 minus mu which is again 1 by 1 minus mu overall works out to mu. So the expected value of y comes out to mu here. Similarly when I am going with the variance of y, variance of y is coming out as b double dash of theta into a of phi. a of phi I got it as 1 by phi 1 by n. So this part is 1 by n b double dash of theta b of theta is log 1 plus theta b dash of theta is e power theta by 1 plus e power theta right b dash of theta is e power theta by 1 plus e power theta so when i want to look at b dash of e power theta it is nothing but 1 plus e power theta into e power theta minus e power theta times e power theta divided by 1 plus e power theta square. So it is becoming e power theta plus e power 2 theta minus e power 2 theta by 1 plus e power theta whole squared resulting in e power theta by 1 plus e power theta whole squared. Now we know that e power theta See, we have uh, put uh, uh, theta is nothing but log mu by 1 minus mu. So, we know e power theta is nothing but mu by 1 minus mu. So, this is mu by 1 minus mu by divided by 1 by 1 minus mu squared. So, this is coming out as mu times 1 minus mu right so directly this is coming out and uh, a of phi a of phi we have already uh, taken it uh, uh, a of phi we already uh, have it as 1 by n so uh, I mean a of phi is coming out as uh, 1 by phi phi is taken as n so I can directly write the variance of mu is mu times 1 minus mu. So directly again coming out with respect to the mean that is I mean mean and variance of the binomial distribution. So using the exponential family of distributions also we can very well derive the mean and the variance of the various distribution. Similarly think of a gamma distribution we can arrive in the same manner right so here also instead of depending on alpha and lambda as parameters we talk about we talk about mu and sorry we talk about uh, alpha and mu as the parameters wherein we are taking mu as alpha by lambda that's the only difference okay so when we take uh, f f in terms of f of y Okay, lambda per alpha by gamma of alpha times y to the power of alpha minus 1 e to the power of minus lambda y. This is what is it. So, what I will uh, typically do is lambda, I am writing it in the form of alpha by mu. Wherever lambda is there, I will write alpha by mu. So, this becomes alpha per alpha by mu per alpha gamma of alpha y to the power of alpha minus 1 e to the power of minus lambda is alpha by mu times y. Now everything I will express in the form of e power. e power log alpha power alpha is alpha log alpha. right so we will write it as e to the power of this so it is alpha lag alpha minus alpha log mu minus log gamma of alpha plus alpha minus 1 log y minus alpha 
by mu times y. Now this is where we can very well uh, write this entire thing e to the power of minus y by mu this part e to the power of minus y by mu minus log mu times alpha this part i can write minus of uh, i can take and put e to the power of minus y by mu plus log mu times alpha plus I'll take it as alpha minus times log y plus alpha log alpha minus log gamma of alpha. Now you look at this again comparing it with it. So I can very well take my theta equal to 1 by mu or minus 1 by mu. Right, I'll take my theta, so y, so only this part, y theta if I am taking, so this is uh, becoming, theta is becoming minus 1 by mu, minus b of alpha, by b of theta. So here, uh, first of all, the phi is also coming out to alpha for me. So basically, I can uh, get a of phi for me as 1 by phi. Now what else? B of theta. Now this part is B of theta. So theta is 1 by mu, but uh, this I need it as minus log mu. Right? I need this as log mu. So theta is, uh, theta is uh, minus 1 by mu. So that's the reason B of theta is going to come out as minus log minus theta. And C of Y is this remaining entire stuff. Wherever I have uh, taken alpha, I'll write it as phi. So C of Y comma phi comes out as phi minus 1 log Y plus phi log phi minus log gamma of phi. Right, so that's where I can very well uh, look at Okay, B dash theta. So when I am looking at B dash of theta, the, differen the, the differentiation of this minus 1 by log minus theta, right, log uh, and uh, minus 1. So it is becoming 1 by log minus theta, right, and uh, 1 by log minus theta. Here theta I have taken as minus 1 by mu. So 1 by log minus of minus 1 by mu. So this is purely uh, becoming log 1 by mu. 1 by log 1 by mu. So this is uh, purely uh, becoming mu. So directly I can take the mean of the gamma distribution is going to be mu which is nothing but alpha by lambda. Similarly, if I want to go with the variance, I am looking at as B double dash of theta. B of theta, B dash of theta, we have already uh, got as minus 1 by log minus theta. So, B double dash of theta is uh, coming out as 1 by theta squared, which is coming out again as mu squared. Mu squared uh, is coming out as B double dash of theta. And uh, what about uh, A of phi here? It is 1 by theta, 1 by minus 1 by mu. So this is, uh, this is mu is nothing but alpha. So otherwise it is coming out as mu squared by alpha. So this is uh, a way out for me to really uh, work out in terms of different distributions, considering them as an exponential family of distributions. And finally, uh, trying to uh, find out the uh, various uh, uh, various uh, uh, moments of those different kinds of exponential family distributions. So this is the first step as a part of the generalized linear modeling kind of a process. Understanding of an exponential uh, family of distributions, how we can write their density functions in a typical exponential form 
is something that uh, all these different distributions are bringing to us right 